ESA did it again. Another official, beautiful picture, another glossy post, and right on cue, the same message wrapped in friendly packaging. Go home. Nothing to see here. It's just a duck. I swear they have a template for this. New anomaly drops. Public starts leaning forward, and immediately the institutions pull out the pacifier. Relax. It's normal. Trust us. We're the experts. And the thing is, I don't think most people are stupid. I think they're busy. And that's why this works. They don't have time to fact check a space agency. They don't have time to open the paper, compare it with previous cases, look up typical comet X-ray intensity ranges, then cross-check the orbit solutions and the non-gravitational parameters. So the average person sees a pretty image, a confident caption, and they mentally exhale. Okay, cool. It's a duck. And that's the trick right there. You don't need a lie. You only need a half-truth delivered with confidence. So let's talk about this ESA post. They show 3i Atlas in X-rays. Red glow. They say it's X-ray light produced when gas molecules streaming from a comet collide with the solar wind. And immediately you get that tone. This is normal. Like, nothing unusual. Case closed. Move along. And I'm going to say this clearly so nobody clips me out of context. Comets producing X-rays is a real phenomenon. That part is not the argument. If you aim an X-ray instrument at the right interaction region, where solar wind ions swap electrons with neutral cometary gas, you can get X-ray emission. We've known that for years. Fine. But here's where the duck starts doing its job. Because people hear comets can produce X-rays, and they assume that means this specific X-ray detection is ordinary and expected. And those are two different sentences. That's the entire game. The existence of a phenomenon is not the same as the extent of a phenomenon. The question isn't, are X-rays possible? The question is, why this much? Why this geometry? Why this object? Why now? Because if you've been following the 3i Atlas file, not the memes, the actual file, it's been anomaly stacking from the beginning. And every time we get close to a hard answer, we get a soft explanation. It's always comforting. It's always simplified. And it's always delivered like you're not supposed to ask the next question. Now, ESA's post points to their image, and they explain the layout. They say blue marks empty space with a little X-ray emission. They mention the black horizontal line is a detector gap. Okay, fine. That's instrumentation. But watch how the caption language operates. It slides from, we observed X-ray glow, into this glow is related to gases, and then it implies composition, it implies CO2, it implies hydrogen, and here's the part people caught in the replies, and this is the part you need to focus on, because it's where the credibility lives. There's a difference between X-rays are sensitive to certain gases, and we measured gas composition from X-ray spectroscopy. Those are not the same. One is a general statement. The other is a measurement claim that should come with line ratios, spectral fits, uncertainties, and a clear chain of reasoning. And people in the comments notice that ESA's wording is careful. It doesn't cleanly say, we measured nitrogen, or we measured hydrogen, the way you'd expect if that's what they actually did. It leans on uniquely sensitive phrasing. It leans on vibes. It leans on public-friendly certainty. And if you're watching this like a normal person, you might miss that. But if you're watching it like someone who's been tracking the pattern, you see what's happening. The post is engineered to calm the conversation, not deepen it. And that's why the duck is so insulting. Because it's not even about whether the agency is right or wrong. It's about the posture. The posture says, you're not smart enough, you're not qualified, don't think, don't ask, just accept. Trust us. We're experts. And I always ask the same question. How are you an expert in something that is literally new history? Three interstellar objects ever. That's it. 2017. Umwamua. Zero clean closure. Years of debate. 2019. Borisov. More comet-like. Sure. And now, 2025. 3i. Atlas. And suddenly, everybody is an absolute authority on what interstellar bodies normally do, based on what sample size? Two and a half? This is why people get angry because the certainty doesn't match the situation. Now let's go to the part that makes this ESA post land, like gasoline, on an already burning fire. The orbital solutions, the non-gravitational parameters, the A1, A2, A3 tweaks. If you don't know what those are, think of them as the extra push terms in the model. The stuff beyond pure gravity that accounts for outgassing jets giving the object a shove. Again, this is normal for comets. Non-grav accelerations exist. But what people keep pointing out is the behavior of the solutions over time. With normal objects, more data tends to stabilize the model. Residuals shrink. 
uncertainty collapses. The solution converges. It gets boring. With 3i Atlas, the public-facing vibe has been the opposite. Every new solution seems to tweak assumptions. Tweak A1, tweak A2, tweak A3. Adjust directionality. Adjust magnitude. Adjust physical interpretation. And critics argue that when the model keeps needing new patches, it's a sign the object doesn't fit a simple comet model cleanly. At least not cleanly enough to talk like the case is closed. And then comes the escape hatch. CO2. You've seen this move before. CO2 sublimates farther from the sun than water ice. So whenever the behavior looks weird, you can always say it's CO2 doing comet stuff. That's the duck. That's the label you slap on the weirdness to make it sound routine. And I'm not saying CO2 can't be involved. It can? It probably is. The point is, the label gets used to stop the conversation at exactly the moment the conversation should get more precise. Because even if CO2 is involved, the critic's argument is that the numbers still don't close neatly, unless you assume extreme behavior that isn't directly shown. And if you do assume extreme behavior, then say it. Put it in the open. Don't smuggle it through a meme caption. And this is where the more data, more problems pattern becomes the star of the show. Think about the early days of this object. People asked a simple question. If it's a comet, where is the tail? And the answer was, too early. Wait until it gets closer to the sun. Then it gets closer. Then the story shifts. Then it passes key windows and the public gets curated releases, delays, silence, and then reassurance over and over. The bet from the beginning was that as it came in, everything would get simpler. The tail would appear. The behavior would normalize. The explanations would converge. But what if the opposite has happened? What if the closer it gets, the more complicated the picture becomes? That's what people are reacting to. That's why the duck feels like an insult. Because it's trying to flatten a story that keeps refusing to flatten. Now, there's another piece you mentioned that is actually lethal if you use it correctly. The mainstream table. The table that lists proposed natural explanations and checks boxes against observed characteristics. This is where you can hit them without sounding like you're inventing anything. Because you're not saying aliens. You're saying, look at the mainstream document. Look at how many characteristics don't fit the comet column. Look at how the other hypotheses get more check marks. And then look at the public messaging that still says, it's just a comet, go home. That's the gap. That gap is the entire story. Public certainty versus scientific uncertainty. Meme captions versus messy checklists. Duck versus, we still don't have a unified model. Now, I'm going to be careful with one specific claim in your prompt, because this is where people can get clipped and destroyed. The nickel and iron discussion. The smarter way to frame it for Astro Dynasty is not to declare this can't exist in nature, like it's absolute, but to frame it like this. Reports of strong nickel signatures without the expected accompanying iron signals have been described as unusual and debated. And that's part of why the chemistry discussion remains open. That framing keeps your punch without turning your video into a single claim someone can attack. Because the real power is not one claim. The real power is the stack. Anti-tail behavior. Brightening. Color shifts. CO2 dominance. Carbon chain depletion. Weird signatures. Orbit solution tweaks. And now, an ESA X-ray post that tries to meme the whole thing into duck. That's the pattern viewers feel in their gut. That's why they watch. That's why your Astro Dynasty style works. You're not selling one detail. You're selling the feeling of, wait, this is bigger than they're admitting. And here's the thing, I'm not even saying ESA is hiding aliens. I'm saying the communication style is manipulative. It weaponizes the public's lack of time. It leans on authority. It discourages scrutiny. It gives you a true statement to cover a much harder question. Because yes, X-rays exist everywhere. Yes, you can point instruments at deep galaxies and see X-rays. Yes, hot plasma emits. Yes, charge exchange happens. Nobody disputes that. But when a study itself says, we need further confirmation. And then two days later, the PR machine drops an image and goes, duck. People have a right to ask why the tone changed, why the caution disappeared, why uncertainty got translated into certainty. And if you want to keep viewers locked, this is the pivot. You challenge them. You tell them not to take your word, not to take ESA's word, to check the difference between what is actually claimed versus what is implied, to read the post carefully to read the replies, to look for what's measured and what's inferred, because that's how people get unprogrammed. You show them how the trick works. Half truth plus confidence plus meme equals compliance. That's the duck. And here's the part that makes it even funnier in a dark way. While ESA is telling people, go home, 
There are independent analysts and observers combing through archives, downloading raw files, tracking orbit updates, watching parameter changes, and building their own timeline. The story is not dying. The story is multiplying, because the internet doesn't forget, and it doesn't stop when you tell it to stop. So now the question becomes, why are they rushing to label it? Why are they rushing to calm it? If it's truly routine, let it be routine. Let the data speak. Release the spectra. Release the uncertainties. Show the line fits. Explain the intensity. Explain the morphology. Explain how typical this extent is compared to other comet X-ray observations. Not in vague words, but in plain numbers. Because if you don't, you create the exact monster you claim to be fighting. Speculation. And that's the irony. The duck doesn't kill speculation. It feeds it. Because people can feel when they're being managed. So I'll end this with the same challenge I always give. Don't argue with me. Don't argue with ESA. Argue with the pattern. Ask yourself a simple question. Does the official story get cleaner as data improves? Or does it keep requiring new patches and new memes? And when a post leans on the phrase, trust us, ask why it needs that phrase at all. Real measurements don't need trust us. Real measurements can be checked. And right now, the only reason the duck works is because most people don't have time. But you do. You're here. So before the post gets buried, before the next PR wave drops, go read the wording. Read the replies. Save the screenshots. Compare the orbit solutions. Watch how the parameters move. Watch how the escape hatch words get recycled. CO2. Comet stuff. Uniquely sensitive. Nothing unusual. Watch it. And then tell me what you think. Is this just normal science communication trying to calm a chaotic internet? Or is it the same old playbook? Half truth? Half spin? Full confidence? Because once you see the duck trick, you start seeing it everywhere. And no, we're not going home.